Carlin of Midnight Shine. Welcome to Resilience Radio. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, um, we have, I think we interviewed last year, the year before, um, and I got 8 million Midnight Shine albums. And since then, a lot has gone down. Um, I don't know if I want to talk about Politician Man, because you're in Canada, I'm in the US, but it's the same crap. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's similar, uh, very eerie um, similarities between the two countries. So why do we have a border then? If we're just, you know what I mean? If we're throwing the same temper tantrum, might as well just make it one big chunk. <laughs> I don't know. But we talked in our past interview and we started with music and your musician and your musicianness. And then right after we had our conversation, but bam, you were facing some tribal water issues. So will you catch us up with all of that, that fight? Yeah, um, it's been over a year now. It would have been a year, I think, in July since we we, we were um, told about the water issues here in, in my home community. I don't what is think, your home community? Uh, Ottawa, Ottawa, Piscat. We're, uh, we're located in Hudson's Bay, James Bay, right up in northern Ontario. And it was shocking for a lot of us because this is something that was known for, for quite a while um that the water was so contaminated that you couldn't even breathe you the vapors from it or even bathe in it longer than two minutes it's crazy um that, that what, what was it contaminated with sorry like like was it mining stuff because here in california and gold rush we our water is contaminated by mining it, it was contaminated by byproducts in the, in the treatment process so organic stuff that they that they uh treat uh, it was byproducts of that, um, which were pretty pretty hazardous. The long term accumulative accumulative effects are are things uh, like cancer and, and other things, which is which is pretty bad. And this was everywhere on the on the reserve. Yes, it was. Um, we we have running water uh, here in the community, and that's where the water contamination issues lay are within the running water, the system that we have. Uh, we all have, we also have separate systems uh, called dispensaries that use reverse osmosis for treating the water or filtering the water. And those, those dispensaries are used for collecting drinking water and jugs. Even those were sort of in question, but they since have replaced those. And I think uh, the overall issues with the the water from the taps, I don't, to my knowledge, have not been addressed yet. And I think the work uh, that's supposed to be done on it has been delayed because of the, the COVID and, and the pandemic and all the restrictions that we have, are facing today. But I think, you know, we're all finding ways to still move forward. Uh, you know, I'm a business owner and we've been struggling, you know, and we're, we're still we're still doing what we need to do um to to stay alive you know and stay afloat mm. but water is something needed to stay alive and stay afloat <laughs> so how is this community supposed to endure this pandemic without the healthy tools you know that's crazy it is and that's that's why you know there's this big scare that we're the most vulnerable people, uh, indigenous communities, indigenous peoples, and, and, and particularly in Northern remote Canada, are they gonna be the most vulnerable because we have lack uh, in basic infrastructure. We, some of us, uh, a lot of us don't even have clean drinking water or clean water. So um, overcrowding, you know, we don't have great healthcare. We don't have uh, a lot of things that you would have in an urban setting. So how do you guys or how are you able to, to combat that during this pandemic pause? Well, I, I you know, I, I'm from here and I don't think I'm vulnerable, like to, you know, what everyone is saying, you know, I feel strong. I feel healthy. You know, I'm a survivor and, I've, you know, a lot of people up here are survivors. So, I mean, when you tell me I'm vulnerable, I'm probably going to look at you like, what? I don't 
feel like I'm vulnerable or weak or, or anything like that. I feel pretty strong. You know, I feel, I feel that way. And I know a lot of other people feel, feel the same way. And, you know, we, we, uh, depend on a lot of things up here. Like we draw from the land, even our herbal medicines and other medicines we use. Uh, and we've been drawing on that, um, since this pandemic came, um, you know, we have our own immune boosters and stuff that we use traditionally and we're using those. So we feel pretty safe and pretty confident. And, and on top of all that, we've been stuck here because of all this travel restrictions and we haven't been able to go anywhere, absolutely anywhere, like out of the community other than to our camps for hunting and cutting wood and collecting whatever else we need to, um, you know, so we're doing our part and we're being act activists and making sure that people are safe, keeping our, keeping our elders safe and, and keeping our community safe um, and doing what we're being asked to. And it's, it's tough, you know, like, cause I know a lot of people out there are not doing their part. And this is why I think some of the situations we're getting into now um Ontario Ontario uh, just declared a state of emergency again and it's terrible what's going on out there and you know it's 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 gonna get worse and, and if people don't start really you know grinding through this and bearing down and, and getting the things done that need to get done I think uh um it's gonna get a lot worse yeah they need to act right okay correct <laughs> So um, amidst the pandemic, you have new music. Yeah, surprise. <laughs> yeah, I've been work. I've been working. You know, I, I, you know, you have to adjust things and readjust everything. The whole everything just changed for a lot of people, everyone out there. And there's not one person that hasn't been affected by this pandemic worldwide. Uh, and uh, you know, unlike many other people, I've had to adjust everything, and that includes um the the whole strategy behind the music and keeping that keeping that moving uh, forward is is certainly been the challenge and in, in, in the time we're in now uh but i've been creating and and you know we had i had been writing quite a bit before the pandemic hit and had got some recording in so luckily i had some stuff already kind of tucked away and we were able to draw on some of those things well i see you in your musical cubby so I assumed like something had to have happened. Yeah, I've been like, I built this space. Uh, we haven't actually did any big story or anything about this place, but uh, and I shouldn't probably say too much about it, but this is the space I'm in now. And I built this about almost two months ago and it took me a good month to, to get in here and finally have this space to have to come in and, and work and, uh, you know, create music and do other things. It's just nice. It's such a wonderful space to have. Yes. Adrian's creative cubby. Yeah. <laughs> you get it. Yeah. So do you, is, is this music now available for purchase? Do you have merch? Like how can people who love you and love midnight shine kind of help support that way? Well, the, I always drive people to the uh, website, um, www.midnightshineonline.com, and you can find everything you need to about us there. And the, 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 the single is out uh, today. Um, you can find us on every platform right now, uh, iTunes, Spotify, you name it. Uh, we're, we're there. Um, check it out. I mean, I, I, I downloaded it onto my iTunes and um been telling people about it it's just it's just really uh it's really exciting for me to get this song on it's been a long time coming and i'm really proud of the the work that went into this and the message behind this song what is the message behind that song I, it's a rally song you know i think it, it, we need this right now we need to come together we need to more than ever before in the history of humanity now is the time to put our differences aside and let's rise up uh, from below and, and, and rise up from the ashes. And, uh, you know, we have to, there's just no other way to do this and, and you know, uh, than to get up and, and come together in a very, very big way. See, I admire that about you because to me, I want that, you know, your hunting camps, your caribou skinning, your medicines, you're living independent of this chaotic system is where I want to go. So the fact that 
you're trying to heal both is kind of impressive to me because again i just want to go hide and do our indigenous thing and let the world burn but you still have faith in us as humans and that's a big deal yeah i mean it's tough you know and it seems like we keep going backwards you know and especially in the last year or whatever it's just been terrible you know everything that's been going on particularly in north america um uh, it, it's, it's really, really, really uh, troubles, troublesome time for, for a lot of people. And I think, but, you know, I think there's, there is hope, there is hope and there's always hope. And it's, it's in places that we're not always looking. So we just have to go, you know, and, and find, find the beauty in, in, in humanity um, because it's there. It is, but then you have that black snake mentality that we're fighting against that we're trying to use, preserve, live with. And this other system seems like it wants to eat it all and sell it back to us. Yeah, uh, you're, you're, you're right. I agree with you 100%. I mean, it's, it's a system that's broken and, and system that's been in power for so long. And it's, it, it's, it's coming to an end it's it's everything we we see now happening and i think is it's happening for a reason you know it can't continue to exist the way it has been for so long and we're seeing that people are challenging you know people are the good people out there and, and not and not ever and even the bad people are not all bad they're they're just some really really stupid actions and bad actions um that doesn't necessarily make them bad people uh, because we all created good with the creator's hands and um, it's just the bad, you know, some of us make some really, really bad decisions in life. And uh, unfortunately, uh, um, we, we, we take those bad decisions and do really, really horrible things with them. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, you're seeing a lot of things happen and I think there's a reason for it. And I think we're not out of it yet, uh, but I think we're, we're starting to see people um, rise up and uh, challenge the system and in order for us to to go through that transition to a better place it has to happen i'm with you i just i don't know it's a, this show should be called the optimist and the pessimist you know you're, <laughs> you're like we can do it people and i'm like i don't trust any of you <laughs> Yeah, I see that. I, you're like, yeah, 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 whatever. Um. It's, it's not a whatever. It's trying to let things sink in. It's trying to let this hope that you're bringing sink in. Yeah. You know, um, you get hurt so many times by the system that the idea of it ever changed. It hasn't changed since first contact here on this continent. So my heart believes you but my brain is like whatever you know <laughs> well if all if, if if all else fails and you could come up here and uh we uh we'd be happy to have you come live with us and we could go skin some caribou together um and do all that stuff <laughs> collect medicines ready uh, <laughs> get away from everything that's going on out there ready so i'm snooping around your midnight shine online website and i know that things have changed since the um the pandemic but what up you're writing a book have you finished the book where's the book what's up with the book yes the book um i i've been starting to write pieces um and the, the process has has uh, begun uh, over the course of the last few weeks, again, things are starting to ramp up with the book. Uh, so that's been something uh, new for me, completely new. Uh, also very exciting and, and also very nervous about it as well. Uh, of course, you, I think as a first time author, you want to, you know, do, do really good with, with your first, first ever book. And I certainly um, want to just draw from a very genuine, unique kind of experience about my, my experiences up here. And I want to use those in a very kind of raw, um, genuine way. Uh, I'm not going to get into all these things that I don't know. And, and, you know, I just really want to keep it true to who I am and the types of experiences I've had up here and how I use those uh, to, to view the world around me. 
Well, isn't that kind of how, who we are though, as indigenous people, we're supposed to be drawing from that environment around us, that creator created medicine and energy. And so you don't end up a bitter old. <laughs> but do you find in, you know, putting this book or daydreaming this book together, it seems like a weird balance of what we're able to share and versus not share. You know what I mean? That, that weird line, or maybe it's just my, you know, cause it's safe. What we still have left is so sacred because it survives so much. So there's always this anxiety in me of how much do I say share with the world because it's ours. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's there's certainly uh, has to be a level of of um, we have to be protective of our knowledge and, and our wisdom. Uh, you know, we, we as we know, history continues to repeat itself over and over uh, in, 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 the, in in our countries <laughs> um, where people are out there to steal what what is not theirs and take. Um, and our knowledge is, is very important because some of the knowledge we carry, well, a lot of the knowledge we carry is, is ancient knowledge, you know, that's been passed down from generation to generation. The, the songs that I sing in our ceremonies come from, they say, the beginning of time, passed down, you know, from, from my grandfather to his grandfather and so on. And just think of that, that, you know, when you think about that, it's amazing it's just so amazing that we still have those things and those are worth protecting. And, and you're, I completely agree with you. Um, I'm nervous about what to share. And I think I'm, I'm willing to share some, but uh, some of it, I think most of it will be mostly on the surface, only to help people understand who we are and to bring them in um, and to share, you know, share that, that on the surface knowledge to, to hopefully make people understand this more well yeah and you can share what you've learned and and lessons and hardships you endured without going into the details of our ancient ceremonies mm -hmm. i dig i look forward to it so far whatever you do you're articulate in your music you're articulate in your message so i feel whatever you end up doing is going to knock it out of the park well i hope so <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not worried about you too much there, sir. So do we have merch? I thought I saw a blurp of masks on Facebook. Um I'm yeah. looking to see looking to see what kind of goodies you got going on. Yeah, we got a shop set up there. You can find some trucker caps and some kooks. Um, I believe we have some more t-shirts. Uh you can you can find the CDs there as well from the band, Midnight Shine. Um, and we did have some masks available. I'm pretty sure we still have some uh, that we sourced out to some indigenous creators, which was pretty, pretty awesome. These are cute and I like the beanie. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's radio, I'm just gonna show people pictures that you're never gonna see. Midnight Shine online store. So I want to talk a little bit more um, respect the gift was this a long time coming or was it already kind of in your repertoire of uh, bc before covid writing you know what this was just before uh we were full-blown covid uh the writing just finished we actually got the recording done and everything was starting to you know kind of ramp up uh, in the media with all this covid stuff so it's just kind of right, I guess, right, right when it started, we had just finished it. Um, but there was a lot of craziness going on in the world at the time. And that's kind of where we got the idea from um, respect the gift. And I think for me, I've always tried to use my gifts in, in, in a good way. Um, as, you know, I'm so giving of myself sometimes. I think I give too much and I wish I could give more to, to people uh, in my life and beyond um so that's kind of what inspired uh, this song uh, the one of the writers chris chris gormley had brought the song to our session and and he had heard uh, read something um 
from a very uh, famous musician about respecting the gifts that we have as people, as humans, and using using it for the better, um, um, using those gifts to to help you know people and and do whatever we can to make this a better world. Collectively. Collectively. Like we all have something to contribute to the greater good to make it all good. Yeah, absolutely. See, I you're just I want to I just want to pinch you because you're so sweet and centered, you know, and I feel so beauty and the beast and wounded and all. <laughs> you know, we're never going to get along. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so that's why I appreciate you continuously giving us that good, honest, true, heartfelt vibe. You know, we need more of that to, I don't know, I feel like I just need to always be holding smudge and listening to Adrian Sutherland. Is that, is that literally what I have to do to get better? <laughs> yeah, totally. But we survived for a millennia, a million millennia before contact getting along. There aren't major scars of warfare and the need to develop guns and weapons and atomic bombs because I was taught if you don't like somebody, you just move a hundred yards to the right. You know, that's how it is on our res, you know, just move over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, we, we've been doing fine. I mean, we had um, like our own science, we had our own societies, our, even our own governance, you know, we had all these things in place um, forever. And, and we, we were doing well, um, pre contact. And when, 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 uh, when, when, when our Europeans came over, that's when, you know, things got really, really messy for us. And we've been trying to, you know, pick up and, and, you know, everything that was sort of misplaced and trying to find ourselves. And some of us are a lot further ahead than others. And some of us are still, you know, trying to find, find those things that kind of make, make us who we are as Indigenous people. Yes. Well, how can us Indigenous people and radio listeners, how can we support your water efforts and your music? Do you guys have any online concerts coming up? Or like, what's the deal with Adrian Sutherland? Um, well, <clears throat> it's, it's supporting me, I guess, is, is one way you can help. Um, the more support that I can get, the more people that can help kind of elevate my voice um, the, it, the more I can help my situation in my community. And, and that, that's, that's one of the messages I've been putting out to a lot of different people um, who ask that question. And the more that you support, I guess, me as an artist, and um, the more I'm gonna be able to do with, with that platform. Now, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, I don't know, what are the kids doing these days? How can people reach out and high five you? Um, yes, yeah, so we have uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram. We do have a TikTok. I knew it. <laughs> but I, I don't think it's live yet. Uh, anyway, there's a whole like, there's a whole team of experts that are, you know, setting all that stuff up because TikTok to me is like, is like Chinese. I don't know anything about it. So well, that and we're not 12. So. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but anyway, yeah, so we have all that stuff kind of, you know, being lined up and, and we, we will, we want to stay current and we want to, you know, use those platforms to, you know, try to, um, get our, get our music out and get our, get our message out to as many people as we can. Um, so is, we'll see. is this the best Facebook for you? Yeah. Adrian Sutherland in Midnight Shine. So is that where people can reach out or is it better through the website? I want to streamline the support. The best way would probably go, go to Facebook, I think. Yeah. Yay. So you guys, buttons, t-shirts, stickers, trucker hats, beanies, physical CDs. Like they're still giving us things to touch and hold. So. Yeah. 
and then really you seem like the most selfless sweetest decent human and i do trust that whatever we do to support you does ripple out as far as it physically can so i i believe in what you're doing and i'm just hoping those like positive ripples make it this way i hope so i mean i'm doing i'm doing this there's a higher purpose you know for me and it's never been about fame or, or any of that um you know it's, it's there's a higher purpose and i truly truly want to use whatever gifts i have to to help people and that's what it's all about but i truly believe that and it oozes from you <laughs> you know you're like our canadian cousin we're stuck in the same boat you know we we're we're up against that same broken system mm -hmm. and i don't know maybe if they listen to us a little bit we can kind of fix those cracks and how this system is broken but I don't know. So again, midnightshineonline.com. Now, do you just take random donations? Can somebody be like, I just want to mail this guy 50 bucks? Uh, I don't think I've ever received any uh, donations randomly, but uh, I'm certainly not in a position to turn any donations away. <laughs> Okay, good. See, I always imagine every episode that there's a millionaire in a hammock just waiting for that one heartstring to be pulled. So maybe today is that millionaire in that hammock and you'll just get some random, and you accept US and Canadian dollars, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. So real quick, my beyond just being a poet, a musician, an author, a community staple supporter you're also a caribou skinner now what's up with that video it says skinning a caribou in eight seconds is it just fast forward are you that good uh yeah it's a bit uh deceiving because when you look at the title it's like in 20 seconds skinning a caribou which is impossible uh i did a time lapse okay uh, see i didn't know if like that was some ancient indigenous <laughs> secret they're like hey i got one stick and one dead animal let's do this <laughs> yeah it was uh i did it actually in 30 minutes i think uh that video it, it turned out 20 seconds time lapse um yeah in real time it was about 30 minutes to get it done That's and, uh, still quick you could just tell how bad my posture is i got such a bad posture and i'm just like right away i'm like eh, my posture is so horrible in this video it's okay we're getting old <laughs> yeah <laughs> it happens you'll be eating first soon okay <laughs> <laughs> but that is a lot of people uh, vegan and uh, i get it i respect it but this sustains us this stuff in the bones to the skin to the meats to the sinew everything in that is healing and medicinal and purposeful it's not just like let's go come on boys let's go kill ourselves some animals this isn't that kind. but you know what i'm saying like the backwoods i don't know what your canadian budweiser is but you know what i'm saying it's not that kind of thing no it's not uh you know i, I like the way you put it come on let's go shoot something <laughs> uh <laughs> that was amazing uh you know it's not it's not like one of those situations uh uh, definitely not. I mean, you know, we grew up, uh, I'll share one story with you quickly. The first time uh, I shot my car first caribou, and I was a bit of a late bloomer, I guess, for lack of a better term, for, for the, in hunt hunting terms. Um, I, I, I didn't really do well as a young hunter, but later on, when I was a little bit older, a young adult, I started to really, call, I guess, um, come to uh, be, be, became a better hunter anyway. So my first caribou I ever shot was a very emo emotional experience for me. And the first one I ever shot, as soon as I got near that animal, after I took its life, it did something to me like I can't explain. And I, I wept, uh, you know, I was just, I couldn't stop, you know, from crying. And because this animal offered its, you know, its life to me to feed my family, and that meant so much to me. And I think that's where, you know, where that emotion came from. 
And I was so thankful and grateful, uh, so many emotions all at once. And everything, you're right, we use everything from the animal, from, from the hides, the bones, the, the marrow, uh, certain parts of the intestines, and we eat most of the organs. So there's not much really that gets left uh, from, from that one animal. Um, you see me skinning that caribou, uh, that pretty much, that whole animal would be used and devoured. And shared. It's not like you're going home to pack the freezer. Yeah, well, that's a big part of our culture is the more people, the more, the more people that eat the meat, it, it means the more the caribou will roam the earth. So you know what I mean? So it works that way. And, and so it's important for us to, to continue those beliefs uh, and those values that we carry. So we have to share our kill with the elderly and the people that can't get out to hunt anymore. Um, Cause it means for us, it, there's gonna always be caribou on this, on, uh, on our lands uh, when we do that. And also when we're, not able to hunt that will come back full come back full circle right the way that you're hunching it may be a few years there for you buddy <laughs> adrian sutherland midnight shine midnight shine online.com facebook instagram what just give it a google right is that just give it a google yeah give it a google and is there any links or resources to this water issue stuff that you're working on in case people want to sign petitions or like write an angry letter for you i did an opinion piece you could probably find it on the web our web uh website if you wanted to go there and, and kind of see what's going on and that's that was probably the most up-to-date um uh, information on anything that i tried to go back and look and did, did some um, of my own digging to see what the heck was going on if anybody was actually going to, you know, tackle these water issues. And it turns out uh, not a whole lot has happened in that one year, to be honest. It's and frustrating. It is, you know, and um, like, you know, I went to the point where like, would somebody just give this to me? I will figure this out. Give me the damn resources I need and the people I need to do this. And I'm going to dedicate the next, you know, year, two, three, four, I don't know, 10 years to do this. You know, I'm to the point where I'm like ready to do that. Uh, but I'm still hoping, holding out and hoping that, you know, they're going to figure this out. But it doesn't seem like something that you would dilly dally over. I don't know. They say that in Canada, dilly dally. Um, these are humans and this is water, what we need to live. And, you know, we had our Flint, Michigan issues here so I can relate to the toxicity and, and, but something has to change and quickly it's not well, we'll get to it you know what i mean it seems like top of the pile kind of situation it is you know and you know i was in a new i was in an interview uh here up in canada for tv and there was a question that got asked and i asked like, who do i blame for for all this and i i blame the feds it probably it was sort of i probably just kind of was too quick, too quick to uh, pull the trigger on that one because I think there's there's plenty of blame to go around for everyone, and and I say that truly because um, I, we all have some role to play in, in fixing these issues, and it's not just it's not just the, just the governments, but they do they do play an important role in this um, because it really is chronically underfunded a lot of the infrastructure needs we have up here in the north. Uh, so when we don't have the resources to, to tackle, you know, building a new treatment facility and, and, and those types of things, um, it gets very, very difficult for us as a community to, to try to, you know, fix those problems when, when we need, um, you know, we need money to do that. But we all know that there's black government money. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all know there's military money. We all know that there is resources to do this, but somebody has to make it a priority on their end. And I guess that's what gets irritatingly frustrating. Yeah, it is. And uh, that was one thing I brought up too. We, when the COVID hit, suddenly we had about, I don't know, 400 billion that we just pulled out of our butts. You know, and then we, in a matter of, in a mere matter of like two or three months, where did all this money come from? You know, we couldn't, 
we can't even fix the water issues for the last 40, 50 years in indigenous communities. But suddenly we got 400 billion. Just billion, B. Billion, exactly. And we were just throwing around money everywhere. Here we go, money for you, money for you, money for you. All the big companies were getting all these bailouts, you know, and all these, their CEO, top CEOs and shareholders were still getting paid um, and while the rest of us were getting you know, poorer and, and we're suffering even more now in this terrible, terrible um, pandemic we've been in. And our economies have crashed. Um, all the little people that, you know, um, you know, small business owners are just dying, you know, going belly up. Some of them that have been in business for the last 30, 40 years, done, you know, just unbelievable, heartbreaking. It is. So I guess our prayers are going to go up your direction and your prayers are going to come down our direction. And somehow I do believe, I do believe staring at your positive, cheerful face that we are going to take a turn for the best and we are going to figure it out. I, my mantra is going to be humans are good. Humans are good. See, I'm just going to sit there and shake like this. Humans are good. You know, I, I'm, I believe you. I really do. And if anybody can pull it off, it is you. I hope so. I mean, it, you know, I trying to be optimistic here and uh, I know there's just a lot of stuff going on right now that can really bring you down. And, and I think back, you know, to my grandfather and I think about it a lot lately, especially in the times right now, he said before he passed on to me that uh, the future is dark. He said, the future is dark. And he, he said that in the language. And, and I, I think this is what he meant. Um, with the times we're in now is truly are some really dark times we're seeing um, in worldwide. And it's, it's really balancing. I think it's gonna be all, it's gonna, we're, we're gonna be in this for a long while yet before things get better. Um, and I don't know if things are gonna improve right away. Um, who knows, it's hard to, it, it's really hard to tell, but uh, we gotta stay positive. We gotta be optimistic here and, and uh, yeah. Well, I appreciate your time today, Adrian Sutherland, Midnight Shine, Midnight Shine Online.com, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and get some of that positivity rubbed all over you. The new song is available now. Now, is it a downloadable thing or um just iTunes, you know, all the respect the gift? Can I can I give you a dollar for it? Oh, uh, <laughs> I think you can go to our band camp and download it if I'm not okay. mistaken. I'm sorry, I don't know that question for you, but band camp, right. you can. Well, good. I'm just trying to figure out ways to keep you going through this because, you know, it really does kind of seem like the timeline of things getting better and our success as a modern human society kind of depends on us, our, personally, how we, you know what I mean? Like the quicker we get it together, the quicker it will move forward collectively. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to be less crusty now. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, once again, I appreciate everything, and I look forward to this coming year and what you end up doing with the world and with the music and with your book and just all of it. Well, thank you. Uh, I really appreciate your your enthusiasm around all of that and uh and thanks for having me back again it's always fun okay anytime all the time anytime there's an issue or something you want to vent about platform is yours okay all right sir well you take care of yourself and i'm i'm loving you and your little creative cubby <laughs>